Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Box Office Talk. This is the show where I break down what happened at the box office, see if my predictions for the top five are correct, then make predictions for next week's top fives. So let's get right on into it. Last week I predicted the number one would be Black Panther Wakanda Forever once again, number two would be Violent Night, number three would be Strange World, number four would be Devotion, and number five would be The Menu. And I got actually three out of five of my predictions right. I thought it was going to be pretty easy uh, this weekend, um, and some of you did get it right. So here's uh, your shout-outs right now. Congratulations. I thought I was going to be one of these easy winners as well, but, you know, the, the number four and five spot did a little switcheroo that I was very impressed with. Um, so let's go into what actually happened this weekend. Number one was, of course, once again, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. And this weekend, it made $17 million, which now adds to a domestic total of $393 million. Uh, as far as the other MCU films go, it has outranked Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 by 4 million and has now outgrossed Far From Home by 3 million, and it needs 15 million now until it outgrosses Iron Man 3. Worldwide, it is sitting at 733 million, so 17 million away from tripling its $250 million budget. Obviously, big congrats to the team there, because one of the other MCU films that came out this year, um, this movie is about to outgross, that being Thor Love and Thunder. It needs 12 million more until it outgrosses the entire worldwide run of Thor Love and Thunder, which is quite, quite special, I would say. Black Panther is obviously, you know, the better film than Love and Thunder was, but, you know, it also means a little bit more emotionally and actually connects with some people more instead of Love and Thunder's attempt at maybe trying to be earnest and human by undercutting everything with silly nonsense, I don't give a shit about this franchise jokes. <laughs> um, it has already outgrossed the first Doctor Strange and Captain America the Winter Soldier, Doctor Strange by 57 million and Winter Soldier by 19 million worldwide. So there you go. This movie still continues to uh, really, really do wonders in the box office. Uh, this is really fantastic. It's just so funny, you know, like I just said, this movie's about to outgross Thor Love and Thunder's entire worldwide run and there are still some people going like, man, this movie's a big disappointment. And this is based off of like nothing. This is this is based off of no other information other than a conspiracy, maybe. Man, uh, th this it's actually a pretty big disappointment. I have this source, and they put source in quotes because the source is probably not real, that, that says they're freaking out. They're panicking internally about the money. It's like... This movie is, like, four times now. It is number one at the box office. It is still killing it. It's about to outgross one of their other films that I would, if I'm being honest, you know, I would probably consider a more more big disappointment. You know, Thor Love and Thunder allegedly costing the same as Wakanda Forever. And it did, you know, it, it took them a while to triple that $250 million budget worldwide. You know, the fact that Black Panther is about to do that only in its fourth weekend of release, you know, that's pretty incredible. It's amazing where some of these people get their, you know, information from and information is also in quotes. Let's move on. I don't want to talk about depressing internet people <laughs> anymore. <laughs> Number two was a newcomer, Violent Night. Pretty much the only newcomer that really stood a chance at, you know, uh, making a lot of money in the top five this weekend. I uh, made $13 million this weekend, which is on a budget of only $20 million, which worldwide it is already sitting at. It has already grossed $20 million worldwide. Now, there, there's, there's a reason why I'm pretty, you know, I interested about this, a little excited about this, but first, I want to mention that the director of this film previously did Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunter. Um, the opening weekend for this movie was $6 million below that domestically, and it still needs $42 million until it outgrosses it then. Um, worldwide, it needs $194 million to outgross Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunter. And, you know, I just I just don't really think that it will have the kind of legs, unfortunately, like the big enough legs to, like, kind of outgross what it did then, especially comparing a 2022 movie in this current landscape to 2013 box office in January, you know. Know, there was no COVID yet. People weren't, you know, so conditioned to streaming <laughs> as well. Uh, so, so yeah, there you go. But as far as um, the previous film, What Happened to Monday, which uh, is another film this director made, it was on Netflix, but worldwide it managed to gross $25 million. So Violent Night actually, you know, $5 million away from outgrossing that movie. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. But the main thing I wanted to talk about was, like, I'm just so happy that we have a movie out that, you know, is, is you know, me personally, I've seen it. It's a ton of fun. I really enjoyed it. And it's an original idea. Obviously, you know, it's borrowing element, you know, the entire Santa Claus, you know, set dressing and everything, and also borrowing some elements of some other uh, 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 stuck-in-a-building movies like Die Hard. <laughs> but, you know, it's still an original. It's not based based off of, like, strictly based off of a book, or like, it's a remake, it's a new original idea that just has some influences, and, you know, it's budgeted pretty modestly for, for a, a modern-day kind of movie that has this much action in it, you know? I'm, I'm honestly 
almost surprised that it only cost $20 million because sometimes you have a movie that might have like a limited location, but you know, you have a big star in there. So the budget goes up like 20 million is pretty solid. And I think, you know, you have a strong marketing push with, Hey, we have a gimmick of violent Santa doing John Wick stuff to bad guys. And it's like, okay, some people might want to see that bad shit. You know what I mean? And you know, maybe they're surprised like, Hey, that was actually pretty enjoy, like more enjoyable than I maybe thought. I'm going to recommend this to some people. I'm not sure what the word of mouth is going to be on this. Obviously it is the holiday time. So you might think this is the perfect time to release this movie, but there are some people out there that probably don't want to see like an ultra violent Christmas movie, which obviously is totally understandable, but still, you know, they've already gotten past the initial production budget in their opening weekend worldwide. So the, 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 they definitely will be able to double that, potentially triple that, maybe quadruple. You know, it's just it's just very... I, I'm interested to see how this will carry on in the next couple weeks. I hope it does have a solid staying power because I thought it was really enjoyable and to have a success like this would mean wonders for potentially you know, other ideas that might seem crazy on paper, but hey, Violent Night did well. Barbarian seemed crazy. No one wanted to make it, but that made a lot of money. Smile. What the fuck is this? A horror movie with a bunch of smiling people. What do we do with that? All right, it made a ton of money, so maybe we should gamble more on these ideas. Cocaine Bear is another one where it's like, that seems like a batshit idea, but you know, sitting in that theater and hearing the audience reaction, everyone's into it. You go on Twitter, people are talking about it. It, it seems like people are hyped more and more for batshit ideas and I'm hoping that this movie's success you know maybe leads into more of that and also budgeting them appropriately and not like over inflating everything and then oh no we have a flop it's like no you you can they, these movies don't have to be as expensive as a lot of other movies have been making them you know what I mean anyways let's move on to number three which is Strange World this has nothing to do with <laughs> movies being too expensive obviously this is a 180 million dollar budget movie um it made four million dollars this weekend obviously you know another disappointing drop off from last weekend's very low amount. It now adds to a domestic total of 25 million. Worldwide, it is sitting at 42 million. So domestically, it needs 13 million until it outgrosses Treasure Planet, and worldwide, it needs 27 million until it outgrosses Fantasia 2000, which, like, if you're a new Disney animated film and you are not outgrossing these movies, like, right away... That's saying something, you know what I mean? And obviously, yes, I think I've talked about it last weekend too, you know, different landscapes, you know, culturally and, you know, in the movies, whatever. But still, uh, th this movie probably should be doing a lot better. And I feel like they're definitely, obviously, some people will say it's because of homophobia. And yeah, th th there's definitely that crowd too to point the finger at as far as like why people aren't going to the theaters to see this. But I think there is definitely a reasonable argument to suggest that Bob Chappick, who is no longer with the Disney company, maybe while he was in charge, he did not want to push this movie's theatrical release as much as you could have, you know? Uh, the, the marketing was pretty lax, all things considered, compared to a lot of other Disney, Disney, Pixar kind of ideas, and it seemed like maybe they were just kind of waiting to promote the fact that it was on streaming, which is a weird thing, because you don't actually, you know, you, you, you get money from people who pay to use the streaming service, but when you go to the theater and pay a ticket for a specific movie, the profits are going to you for that specific thing. So if you're just spending all this shit and just dumping it on a streaming service you can't you know people will watch it and it's like okay people who are subscribed already will probably keep watching this maybe but it's not like you're making anything back on what you just did you know you're just you know paying more costs that's why netflix is in a bunch of fucking debt but they keep spending shit it's unbelievable anyways let's move on <laughs> to number four yeah the moral of the story strange world is is still a flop number four is the menu which you know it, it still has a little bit ways to go until it doubles its budget but i'd say it's doing pretty you you know, damn good, all things considered. It made $3 million this weekend, adding to a domestic total of $24 million, and worldwide it is sitting at $47 million. So like I said, $13 million away from doubling its $30 million budget. Um, and, and, you know, it, maybe it's slowing down now. You know, it did only make like $3 million this weekend, so unless it gets a big boost somewhere, or it has, you know, incredible staying power to, to double that budget in the next couple weeks, you know, it's just looking very slim. And also, even if they did double their budget, who knows what other, you know, kind of money they need to make in order to actually be considered a success. Like I keep saying in some of these videos, you never really know. Sometimes they'll give you a number, but it, it actually they mean they need a lot more than that. You know, that's why, you know, Black Adam is, such, is looked at as such a big flop because you know, yeah, the budget is 195 million, but simply doubling that won't cover everything. They need like half a billion, maybe a little more. 
Um, but still, the fact that it did hold over well, the fact that it jumped up a bit from where I thought it would be, you know, it, it devotion was above it last weekend, but this weekend the menu overtook it a bit. So that that's still cool, at least, that there is still at least some kind of word of mouth of people talking about this, because it is a pretty, you know, fantastic movie that I would recommend you go see. Don't worry, it's not about cannibalism. That's Luca Guadagnino's movie. <laughs> <laughs> but still, 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 please, please go check it out. I would love to see this, you know, double the budget, at least before it left the top 10. I'd love to be surprised by that. Number five is Devotion. This is another movie that I wish was was going to do well and double its budget, but it's looking like it's not. It made $2 million this weekend, which adds to a domestic total of $13 million. The worldwide total, like, there's a few worldwide numbers, but it only adds up to, like, $13,800,000, and it's like, that's not a really great number to to put into a into a video like this. Yeah, the budget is still reported to be at $90 million, so, yeah, big, big old flop here, and I, I wish it was doing better. It is a good movie. Would recommend you go see it. Um, but, but, you know, that's just, that's just the way these things go now, you know, a, a movie that back in the day would, you know, seem like a surefire hit, doesn't do well because, oh, well, you know, I'll wait for streaming, or, I don't know, there's no, like, huge movie star in it, but also I understand, you know, Top Gun Maverick really stole the, sh stole the fucking thunder from this movie, like, right away, like, people might look at this trailer and go, like, well, it doesn't have the same filmmaking expertise as Top Gun, so why should I bother, which, hey, that's, that's not a not a bad thing to argue with, I must say. But still, I wish it was doing better. Number six, another Fathom Event movie, but not like The Chosen, where it overtook everything. This one is called I Heard the Bells, making $1.8 million, adding to a domestic total of $2.5 million. I have no idea what the budget is. It did not give me a listed one, but hey, Fathom Event did pretty solid. I don't, I don't know anything else about this movie. You know, similar to The Chosen, this just came out of nowhere. That's a lot of these Fathom events sometimes. They'll just come out of nowhere, and it's like, okay, what is this? I haven't heard of this. Uh, maybe I saw a snippet before another movie when they do that little, like, Fathom event segment, but yeah, I don't usually remember those unless it's a big opera, <laughs> so I don't know. Um, congrats, nonetheless. You beat out number seven, which was Black Adam. <laughs> making 1.6 million, adding to a domestic total of 165 million. All right, it's time to do my favorite part of this, uh, talk about how much Justice League has made in comparison. It still needs 64 million domestically until it outgrosses that film. Worldwide, sitting at a $384 million total now, uh, it still needs 271 million until it outgrosses Justice League. So still doing pretty horribly, all things considered. And yeah, it is like uh, 6 million away from actually finally doubling that $195 million budget, but like I've been saying, you know, they they need that half a billion. A lot of these big movies, like, you know, your Black Panthers, or Thor, or Doctor Strange, all these other, you know, big comic book movies especially, they need half a billion. You know, Avatar, um, James Cameron has been talking about, you know, the budget might be pretty hot, like 400 million, I think was the last number I heard as far as like what the budget might be. But he says, you know, in order to break even, we might need to make $2 billion. So yeah, the, the fact that they're just now, you know, after like a, m a little over a month of this movie being out and it's only just now doubling its budget and it's part of a larger comic book franchise, part of a comic book, you know, character. Yeah, this is bad. This is horrible. But as far as The Rock's personal filmography goes, it is now at that point where it's struggling to outgrow stuff that you would expect this movie to do better than. Like Hobbs and Shaw, it still needs $8 million until it outgrosses that domestically. And then worldwide, it's competing with Rampage. It still needs $43 million until it outgrosses that. So there you go. Let's move on to number eight, though, which I am more sad about than Black Adam flopping, which is The Fablemans. And obviously, you know, once award season kicks, because I'm sure this movie will be played once again, once it's nominated for a ton of things, people People want to finally go see it unless it's already streaming then you know it's fucked <laughs> but you know I, I i i just you know mm, you know this has a budget of like 40 million dollars it's based off of steven spielberg's childhood his life essentially and you know that would normally seem like a pretty easy sell steven spielberg one of the most popular film directors of all time there's a lot of directors out there if you ask like a normal person like hey do you know so and so do you know so and so they might go like who is that he's a director what is that but if you say like steven spielberg that's like a uni one of the examples of like a universal name of like oh i know that director but you know still like i don't know if it's like just bad marketing bad marketing push or it wasn't like i like i was saying when it premiered um, it wasn't playing in as many theaters as I thought, and maybe that's what really pushed it back as well. Still don't know, but it made 1.3 million this weekend, which adds to a domestic total of 5.5 million. Still very depressing, you know, for a $40 million budgeted movie, this should be a pretty solid win. And hopefully, you know, it is, like I said, like if it plays more once it's nominated for awards, or maybe in VOD when people start renting it later, I don't know. 
Ugh, oy vey, just, ugh. There, there's disappointing flops, and then there's flops that are funny because it's Dwayne Johnson and Disney associated. <laughs> Number nine is Bones in All, making 1.1 million, adding to a domestic total of 6.04 million. Uh, worldwide, it is sitting at 10.5 million. So yeah, the budget is still listed at 20 million dollars. It's you know 30 million away from doubling that now worldwide. But hey, at least for Luca Guadagnino's personal filmography, it is his highest-grossing film domestically and worldwide. Besides, Call Me by Your Name, for obvious reasons, <laughs> it's it's probably. Not even gonna outgross that, but hey, you know, c congrats, Luca. And finally, closing out the video, number 10, Ticket to Paradise. Last time this movie's gonna be here. Had a pretty, pretty great run, literally opening the same time as Black Adam, and this movie is technically kind of more successful if you just look at the numbers. Uh, it made $850,000 this weekend, which adds to a domestic total of $66 million. And obviously, if you're just tuning in, like, yeah, a domestic total of $66 million doesn't sound great, but worldwide, it is sitting at $167 million on a budget of $60 million, you know, 13 million away from tripling that budget which it didn't but still you know th this is this isn't a movie that has like huge shit pummeled into it like black adam would you know so it's it's fine uh this is a pretty solid hit for george clooney julia roberts and the director of mamma mia 2 and that's that's really all there is to say thank you for you know it, it was a decent movie it's not like this movie blew me away or anything but it was a decent you know fun lovely movie and i'm glad that it had some kind of success surprise people how much money it did just goes to show you the rom-com isn't truly dead you just need some specific parameters <laughs> but now it's time for the fun part the predictions for next week's top five number one i am once again going with black panther wakanda forever and then number two i am going with violent night once again but number three just because of how low Strange World and and all the other movies have been, you know, making. I am going to go with number three, spoiler alert, a movie that normally in this time period, I would say, probably doesn't have a chance. But, you know, considering how low some of these other movies are and the holding, the holding over power isn't as strong, maybe spoiler alert has a chance to sneak on in there. Then number four, I'm going with Strange World. And then number five, The Menu. But what are your predictions for next week's top five? Leave them in the comments below. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I'm Jackson Fulcher. See you guys next time.